Welcome to Two Cents FC. I'm your host, Amobi Kugo, back again with my guy, L. Each week, we'll be talking with individuals from around the soccer world, learning about their stories and getting their unfiltered thoughts and opinions. This week, we're joined by Tormenta FC forward, Kaziah Sterling. We'll be getting to know all about Kaziah, talking about his career and learning about his off-pitch endeavors. Uh, Kaziah, how are you feeling today? I'm not feeling good, thank you. I'm excited to be in. I'm going to get started. No, most definitely. Thank you for taking the time. Um, I know L has been really excited to get get you on the get you on the show. Um, it was big news when you transferred over. I'm sure we're going to get into that later, but let's start off how we always start off. L, what you got? All right, two truths in the cap. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, all right, yeah, two truths in the cap. So it's an icebreaker game that we play where our guest Kazai would tell us three facts about himself. Two would be true, one would be a lie. And I'm hoping I have to guess what the lie is. So I think I'm on the board. I think I'm what, yeah. You like scored last, one? last time. Four one, <laughs> three one, four one, something like that. Yeah. Um, so hoping to score some points this week. Cause I, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Okay, so um, I used to used to be um, a gymnast in my early years. Yeah. I've never broken a bone. And mm-hmm. I was in the debates when I was younger. Mm. Uh, this one is for real a toss up. Yeah, he's well spoken, but debate team, like if you play <laughs> soccer, do you have enough time? Uh, I'm going never broke a bone. Yeah, I'm going to go never broke a bone also. That's the cap. Um, that's the truth. That, that was the truth. Mm. Yes. What was the what was the cap? Um, the bay team. Golly, sometimes it's right under <laughs> the nose. <laughs> that's a pretty good one. Oh, you got it both. Respect, respect. So you um, so you so like you, the uh, you like to argue, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or debate. Call debate, it. yeah, debate. Okay. I'm sure you're pretty good at the banter, then, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, uh, so yeah. T- uh, when did you fall in love with soccer? You mentioned. Um, um, I say from a young age, I've I've always been. Um, yeah, that's something that's always that's always been a, a hobby of mine. More for sort of more for fun, so just playing the garden, stuff like that. Um, my dad was always watching football, so that that's what also that like, helped me get into it as well. Okay. I say from a like, really young age. Did your uh, dad play as well, or is he always just a fan or a supporter and then got you into the sport? Uh, more, more so a fan that I'd play with him. Like he, he, was, he was fairly decent, to be fair. Yeah. But um, yeah. he, he, wouldn't, he didn't um, play like that, so it's more like him watching it and um, encouraging me to play, which got me going. Perfect. And you, obviously you grew up in England, but you have uh, Jamaican roots. Can you talk about your, like, your upbringing growing up and to ultimately making it pro? Um, just in terms of my journey, as in um, football journey, or just like upbringing in general. Just in in general. Um, so grew up in London, as you don't know. Um, um, so in primary school, um, I was, that's when I first joined um a proper team. So um, I, luckily I was lucky enough that my PE teacher um, worked at um, Leighton Orient as mm-hmm. a goalkeeping coach. So um, he brought me into there. So from there, that's when I like. Started um, playing for my first proper team, and then from then, um, a few years down the line, um, I got picked up by Tottenham, and then I was with them throughout the, the youth years, and then that's brought me to here today. No, oh, that's amazing. Uh, so it's safe to assume that you're a Tottenham supporter, or like, is that? Are we jumping no, the gun? No, I'm actually a Arsenal fan. Okay, so yes, talk sir. about that. How did that work out? <laughs> did you have to keep that secret or what? Um, um, just like it's one of those things that you people just assume you're a Tottenham fan, so I've never had to actually say anything <laughs> different. But um, uh-huh. so my dad, uh-huh. my dad, um, he grew up in Highbury, so he was an Arsenal fan. So okay, um, I just followed suit from there. Perfect. So say like, all right, we're heading to London. Can you give us like a breakdown of like? All right, clubs with areas. Obviously, you got the like the North London Derby. Yeah. Uh, but 
give us like someone that's born there what it all means like you're our tour guide our soccer tour guide yeah um so i say because london so compared to america london's like quite small so mm -hmm. um i'll say the arsenal and tottenham stadium are probably about um 15 20 minutes apart so um so that's that's where that the big rivalry comes from um yeah. um recently they've um rebuilt their new stadium so their stadium takes up like most of the area so you can see it from from literally really far away yeah and um yeah. you just like just through the town there's those like football posters like when you go through like so so the area of tottenham there's loads of football posters um advertisement and then even on that like tube stations there's like um high Hi high tube station is like they were all like the arsenal the arsenal team there stuff like that so you just tell us like a um football oriented city and mm -hmm. an area as well yeah obviously uh london and england in general just has a great soccer history who were some of your like soccer influences growing up um Thierry Henry was a big one for me i really mm -hmm. enjoyed um enjoyed watching him play um um Ronaldo, he's one of my he's definitely one of my favorites. And um another striker, Benzema, he's one of even even to now he's he's one of my favorite favorite footballers. Cool. I mean, yeah, so hopefully uh Ballon d'Or Benz gets the gets the award <laughs> this year. Uh yes, sir. so we'll see. Uh can you can you talk about like um, you know, you have a unique background getting in the Tottenham system. Um, a lot of people from the outside looking in, especially in the States, they want to know what it's like growing up, you know, in a pro environment. Um, talk about some of the realities of a professional soccer player at a young level, like the academy, you know, the merry-go-round system of like, it's kind of cutthroat at a young age compared to here. Yeah. If you get cut, you just create your own team from the ground up or your parent will complain to the coach. It's not like that in, in the UK. So yeah. give us like your take, you know, from the expert opinion. Um, so um throughout the academy years I say it's that's where it's like more friendly and more like um a bit more lenient. So that's from like that ends at about fifteen, sixteen. So in England that's when we'd um finish school. Mm -hmm. So once you finish I finished school um when I was um sixteen and then went into full time football. So that's so you start off as a scholarship. Most scholarships are two years, and then after that, you go into being a professional. So it's like as soon as you sign that scholarship, that's when that's when like um you're in a like a professional environment, and you're expected to follow like the same criteria as a first team player. So mm -hmm. um at first they like kind of ease you into it in terms of like what's um what would be required of you in terms of like behavior and the way you apply yourself, and then once then that like, you're almost like expected to like be an adult almost. So I say that's probably one of the hardest transitions that like, probably a lot of um young footballers find, especially in England, because at the time you're still just a kid, but you have to like mentally be an adult. Mm -hmm. So I say that's one of like, the the hardest things I think that a lot of people find. And like what are some of the misconceptions that people assume, you know, you know, from that academy setting, that professional setting? In, you know, in the UK? Um, I feel like maybe that it's, it's really easy because um, cause looking from the outside that you see like um, a few um, young academy prospects come through playing the first team mm -hmm. from the outside. It looks like quite an easy journey, but um, during that journey, there's like loads of ups and downs. Um, there's loads of players as well, like top quality players in your position. So like you're literally just fighting against loads of different players all the mm -hmm. time. And especially in the academy systems, like this, you're not just fighting for players in your position, um, in your area. They're they're looking to bring players in from all across the country, yeah. all across the world. So like, you just really have to be on it all the time. No, most definitely. And then especially Tottenham's known for their development of talent. So can you talk about your personal experience? And then you know you mentioned like some of the misconceptions and some of the things that people don't see from uh, the inside. Uh, some of the players that you kind of came up with or some players that, you know, if it would have went a different way, we would be here about them today to this day. But, you know, circumstances got the best of them. Um, I say, um, so like, so the academy system, like, it's not, I say that it's not always um, the best player 
um, at the time makes it through. So there's loads of players that, um, that I've played with and there's age groups above that you think he's definitely going to end up in the first team. And for whatever reasons where, where it's, um, he's not applied himself properly or just um, sometimes timing, timing can be a really yeah. key factor. Um, so like some, some first team managers aren't too keen on bringing young players in. So that might have been unfortunate for them. Whereas um, a few years down the line, um, managers are more willing to do that sort of thing. And then a younger player's got an opportunity that they didn't get. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's, that's a big one in football timing. Timing's are a really underrated factor. No, um, that's, that's facts. Um, um, also applying themselves, yeah. So that's a big one. As long as you like, I think applying yourself well, as long as you give yourself the right chance to, for when you are called, then, then, then you're a good sort of thing. But those are like the main things that I've yeah. picked up. What, what advice would you have for a young player, you know, whether they're in England, whether they're in their States, uh, trying to make it, you know, a lot of times it's not about where you start, but where you end up. And uh, you've mm-hmm. had a great career thus far and will continue to have one. But uh, what advice would you have for someone that's like looking to follow in your footsteps? Um, I would say, I'll, I'll say it's that like quite cliche, but just always be ready. So you you never know when you'll get your opportunity. So just um, just train with the right sort of habits and the right um, the right mindset. So when you are thrown into that that environment where you need to be on it, professional, um, it's not too much of a shock for you. So I say that the the hardest thing, like for me personally, if if I was to get um, if someone was to tell me I wasn't good enough for my football and ability, was like that's hard to take, but um. That's that's something you just gotta take. Like you gotta um improve um your football ability practice. But if someone wants to say um no, we're not taking because your um, your attitude's not right, you're not on the ball. I think that's that's what would really that like, hurt me. Mm-hmm. But it's something so easy and it's so simple. So I think I think um, that's like a key one. Just your mindset, mentality, and just good habits. Because in football, I think those are the things that um, managers look for first before yeah. they even before they even um, see your football ability. No, I love that you said that and you talked about mindset. You know, a lot of times, you know, because the Premier League is on the world stage. So if you see a young player come up, um, they're the next best thing. Uh, We've seen a lot of times, you know, young players, they make their debut and the next thing you know, they're buying G-Wagons. What are some things that you've seen, like some of the craziest things that you've seen from young players in the Premier League or just, you know, in Europe um, as they you know, come into money, you know, there's big money playing in Europe. That's where everyone wants to play at some point. But like, what are some of the craziest things that you've like been a part of um, and witnessed? Um, I'll say stuff like that. Um, so like, just, um, so like a lot of players that like, make their debut and then they're seeing what um, the other first team players mm-hmm. are doing. So they think, oh, I feel like they feel like a sense of pressure that um, they need to like replicate that stuff. And the um, whole perception of footballers from like the outside, they feel like they have to live up to that, that um, perception. Mm-hmm. So I feel like a lot of a lot of young footballers get sucked into um, doing stuff like that, like buying flashy cars, um, buying flashy stuff that they don't really need, but feel like they they feel like they need to have them. Yeah. Uh, switching gears a little bit, you know, you mentioned Benzema as one of your inspirations. He just won Champions League for the fifth time. You've had the fortune and pleasure of playing Champions League. Tell us about that experience. Um, I feel like it's every soccer player's dream to come out to that Champions League song. Uh, what was that like for you? Um, it, it was it was a strange one. It was, um, it was a really exci- exciting feeling that because um, it was my debut as well, and oh. it was something I just, I just really been um, been looking forward to making my debut and just making it in the Champions League just made it so much better. How many tickets did you ask for? Um, I had quite a few, I think. <laughs> I had quite a few. Because cause, cause I'm local as well, quite a few people yeah. were able to come. So did you know you were going to you were gonna play beforehand? Um, no, I didn't know I was going to play. I knew I'd be in the squad, but I didn't I didn't know I was yeah. going to play. But in my head, I was just always really... Just, I had the thought that I could be coming on, so... Uh-huh. In my head, uh-huh. I, I, not, I didn't know I was coming on, but like in my head, I convinced myself convince myself that so I was, I was just really sort of thing oh that's crazy like it, there's only so many players that can say that they've done that um and then obviously um I think your 
if not one of the only Champions League players, Premier League players, you know, that have played for Tormenta FC. Talk about that transition. How did it come about? Uh, what are some of your goals, you know, coming coming stateside, coming to the good side? Um, that, um, it mainly came about through like my agent. Um, I've always been, I've always wanted to play out in America. Just um, from my younger years, um, I went in a few tournaments, um, in the US for so the IMG Cup. Okay. I played in that a couple of times, and um, I just so enjoyed the feel of playing out here. So that's that's always something I've I've um wanted to experience. And then when I got the opportunity to experience here, I was um I was, I was just really excited to come. Yeah. Where, also speaking to the staff coaches, yeah. Were were some people surprised about you coming? Like, did you know anyone out here besides you know the, your previous visits? Um, I knew uh, a couple players. So um, um, there's a player at Tottenham here. Um, he is just moved to Charlotte from Atlanta, Anton Walk. Okay. So, um, yeah. I knew he was out here. Um, Drew Euro that New York and Lewis Morgan, at New York. I know them them too. So, um. So I kind of got like a little bit of an insight from them as well, which was good. That's good. What were, what were some of the questions that you asked them, you know, the ones that you're able to share on the, on the show? Um, <laughs> I just thought some, um, because I feel like, you know, I like, cause I've traveled a lot, um, football's football at the end of the day, like, I feel like adapting to the football side is more easy. It's more like the other stuff, just the outside. Um, mm. And I, all the feedback I got from just like the outside was um, just really good that, just the environment over here is really more relaxed. Um, probably a bit more so than England. Um, mm-hmm. It's just a little bit less hostile in terms of even in terms of fans, um, just on training environment stuff like that, which was like um, it was nice to hear. Oh, that's that's really amazing. Um, talk about um, you're eligible for England. Uh, you've played for England, yeah. um, but you're also eligible for Jamaica. Um, as you continue to blossom in your career, if the opportunity were to present itself, which national team uh, are you choosing? Um, I feel like that's a bit of a hard one. I probably I probably sway more to England because I've grown up there. Uh-huh. Um, but I would also like to represent Jamaica. I feel like that that'd be a good experience. Um, I'd make my grandparents really proud as well. My family. Yeah, so you you definitely you definitely could be part of that resurgence, you know, bringing Jamaica back to glory days. Yeah, not that I'm trying to sell you on Jamaica, but you know, <laughs> they, you know they they need they need they need the help. Hey, you're in the area too, so like you're yeah. visible to you know, Jamaican coaches, so I can see that happen. I can see you getting yeah. the call up. Oh, uh, and then um, what what it, I know I, I kind we t- kind of touched on it earlier, but you know, being someone of color. Uh, can you talk about that experience overseas? You know, we've heard stories about uh, some of the, um, how can we say it, the trials that you guys have to go through um, over there mm-hmm. compared to here in the States. Obviously, there's some similarities, but there's a, a lot of different differences. Can you talk about your experience uh, back back home overseas? Um, I've been quite fortunate in terms of, um, um, come I've been in quite a, a diverse team and in the teams mm-hmm. I have, I haven't directly experienced stuff but um there's been like some away games where i've um experienced stuff from like fans and um fans even 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 players like in, in like, younger tournaments i've played in so like in terms of that it's, it's been it's like a weird it's a weird, it's a weird type of experience because you don't really you don't really expect that yeah. those sort of things but um but, like, as you get older you kind of like not learn to deal with it but like learn to like but for me I just see it as um something to like drive me on. That's why I try to use anything anything bad that that's just something to drive me on and be even be even better. No, I love that. And then what do you have like any advice for someone that's looking to go pro, you know, especially someone that's someone uh, of color? Um I'll say the um, a key one just um just be yourself. Don't feel don't feel like you have to um um I say dim your character or be someone else to fit in. I just feel like um, that's a big one. Just be yourself. Be be just happy being you. Sort of thing. Cool, most definitely. Um, what else do I got in terms of? I just all right, perfect. You've moved stateside. How many people have asked you if you've seen Tom Boy? Is that place real? Uh, you know, questions like that. 
I'm not no one, you know, surprised me. Really? No. Wow, that's that's pretty good. The Are only you, only question I really get asked is um say that like, they hear me speak, they're just all, like where are you from? Uh huh. Do any of your I, teammates try to like make a, a English accent? Like um I, when I first um I got a bit of that, but um because we have um we have a, a couple English boys there uh, uh-huh. and we have a Scottish coach as well, so um I feel like everyone's a bit a bit used to it now. No, I love it. Uh, what I love about English culture when it comes to football is like you guys um, are really animated on the field. You guys get stuck in. Uh, some of the slang uh, is, is is funny on the field. So uh, for some people that aren't familiar, can you like give us like football 101 slang, you know, from an in- UK standpoint, like some term um, terminology that you use? Um Get flag. stuck in is one. I, I like. I got stuck in. Get stuck in is like. I got PTSD every time I hear that because mm, yeah, a lot of English get, players tell me that. Get stuck in is like um, just like get involved, make a challenge, be aggressive. Yeah. Get involved in like the physical side of the game. Um. Um. What's another one? Off the top of my head, I can't think of any. I can think of a few um like, um stuff that I've been confused with first so that. Like, Oh, hey, you look cool. Um, bibs, pennies. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, that's a great one. I love that you said that. Talk about the difference, the differences between uh, American slang and British slang on the soccer field or the pitch. Um, so yeah, stuff like that. Um, so like, um, our dogs had the physio from um ankle strapping, but um, I asked for ankle strapping, and everyone was looking at me funny, like they didn't <laughs> didn't know what I was talking about. But yeah. because they called it tape out here. Yeah. Uh, they, Call it a tape, or um, I said a plaster. They they wasn't really sure what I was talking about because you don't call it band aids. Yeah, um, just little stuff like that. And the penny, the penny one was um, that that one really confused me because um, because I was on the pitch at the time. I was just thinking, what what do you mean a penny? That <laughs> um, that's money. I was just thinking money. So, yeah, so I was really confused there, but I've got I've got used to that one as well. But you've adjusted. So now, do you adjust to American way, or are you still? Because uh, you guys have a couple English players, Scottish coach. I, I still, I still say um the English phrases. Okay, oh, that's great. Appreciate that insight. Oh, what you that's got actually, for us? That's actually a pretty good segue. Um, just you know, talk a little bit more about how you're adjusting to the states. Um, some of the big differences that you've kind of experienced. Um, you know, being here versus um being over in the UK. I know, like you're down in Statesboro, which like is the country. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a lot of differences. So, like, t- talk about your transition and how that's been. Um, it's, it's been it's been like, quite all right because um I've had a lot of football going on. Um, I say that I've been like just really focusing on that and um and the other stuff. Just um um I haven't been like noticing it too much. But um little stuff like the weather. The weather's always hot here compared to um <laughs> England. So that's something I'm enjoying and I'm um, just trying to get used to because at the moment it's getting um, really hot. So I say I'm still um I'm still almost climatizing, even though it's been a, a few months, couple months in, but um stuff like that. The weather's the weather's definitely a big big factor that I'm enjoying. Um I say the people are are much are much nicer than in London. I say everyone everyone's really friendly and like just like just walking down the street, people like just say hi, stuff like that. Which which um I found that like, really fascinating at first. But I do like it. What about food? Like, what are some of your um, favorite American foods that you've picked up since you've been out um, here? So I, I tried them. Um, I used to hear about Chick Fil A a lot, just all you know, over Twitter, memes, stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, that's that's one place I went to try. I really like Chick Fil A. Um, I've tried um a Panda Express. That's something. Okay. Um, okay. That's something um, we didn't have at home that I've tried. But I say Chick Fil A is the main one that I'm, that I've been enjoying so far. Okay, dope. Have okay. you had a chance to get up to Atlanta yet? Um, no, no. That's somewhere um I really want to go. Everyone, everyone from here just says um, and it's really good there. So that that's like the place to like to go if I do want to go somewhere. Yeah, I live up in the Atlanta area, so like tap in with me when you okay. come up. I'll show you around. Definitely. Show you a couple of other food spots. You might not want to can... go back. I'm telling you. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. For you sure. Might not want to go back. Um. Are there any things that you like to do off the pitch? Like, what are some of your hobbies that you have? 
um um at the moment um I say like PlayStation, so like FIFA stuff like that, um GTA, those are like the main things that I do like when I'm like not at training at the moment. Um I've gone out here you can go to the pool and stuff like that, which is um different to England at like the pool outside, which is good. Um I got to go to the beach um the other day as well, which was nice. It was nice getting out going to the beach because you don't have them sort of things in England. Yeah. Well, you do, but they're like just not as nice with the weather, stuff like that. So that that was that was good to do. Dope, dope. All right, so we we'll jump into a couple of rapid fire questions here. Um, so, what is one interesting fact about yourself that most people wouldn't know? Oh, the facts. I'll, I'll say the one that um I used to do gymnastics. I said mm-hmm. um that 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 one normally shocks everyone because they just think that just football, mm-hmm. that's football. But yeah, that's something I I done when I was younger because um I just had too much energy. So I don't I don't I don't I don't really know how that came. Up. Oh no, it was one one of my cousins used to do it, and because I just had so much energy, um um my parents were just like yeah you should just you should just go do it do it as well. So that's something I got into. Yeah, you still got How's the skills. Like you hit it. Balance? Yeah. Um, I was re. I can still do a few stuff like um round offs, um, front somersault, but um, that's all I got up to learning at the time. So all the stuff I learned, I could still do. But um, I wish I did wish I learned how to do a backflip. That's that's something I really um, add that to your goal celebration. <laughs> yeah, hundred hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> the Obama Yang front flip. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next one. Let's see. Um, all right, so what's on your pre-match playlist? Like, what do you what do you listening to before a game to get you in the mood? Oh, that, it depend. I don't have um um a set one. I know me. Um, I'm I'm a shuffle sort of guy. So, um, but um, future future will definitely be in being the being the shuffle. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Chief Keith's definitely in the shuffle as well. Um, um, I say Drake, Drake's in there. Um, I say, yeah, those are those are like the main three. Um, those are the main three that um, I saw that I've just always had in my in my pretty much playlist sort of thing. Okay, that's a lot of American artists. Like, yeah, is, is that like a big too. thing out there in the UK? Um, um, for me, I was, I was probably like one of like the first out of my friends to like listen to American music. I've just always been drawn to it. Um, so like in England, like English music was um, that's what you call that like, English drill. That was like a big thing growing up. But mm-hmm. um, I was I just almost swayed towards um like American artists. Like um, when I was growing up, I listened to a lot of like Chief Keef, um, Ellie Capone and stuff, um, rappers like that. So like as I, as I grown up, I just always I just always like that sort of music. Yeah, but um, it's, it's, I say it's like really big right now in England as well. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy to see like UK drill influencing you know American drill music and stuff yeah. like that. Like, so it's starting to kind of blend and mesh. You know. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Um, you talked about this a little bit, but like, what's what's your favorite off pitch activity or off work activity? Um, I'll say um. I'll say um FIFA, FIFA, um, um, lots of like PlayStation activities because um normally after train I'm quite tired and fatigued so I normally do try to find stuff that like um um don't take up too much energy, um so um I say PlayStation is a big one, but um last summer I say um a hobby I picked up was roller skating. Okay. Um, that's something um I just always wanted to learn how to do it so like. Um, I just started and just like really got at it. That's something. Um, that's that's definitely one of my newest um things to do. That I enjoy. Can you like skate backwards and stuff? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, so you like roll bounce? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, not as good, but I, I got I got a few skills. I love it. All right. What's the first thing that you do when you move to a new city? So. We'll take we'll take uh, Statesboro for example. First, what's the first thing you did when you moved here besides like, 
you know, finding getting acquainted to your place to live? Like, what's the one of the first things you did when you touched down? Um, um, just found out like where the um, like the high street was for like um, um, all the food places. Um, um, just find that where's like just just a, just a spot for like socializing and stuff like that. That's something um I look for. Um, Sherry, just so just so like I'm a bit aware of aware of my surroundings, how far certain things are. So that's that's the, that's something I feel like I need to do whenever I go to go to a city. Yeah, yeah, it's a big big college town down there as well. So yeah, it's, it's much more quiet, kids. much more yeah. quiet than um 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 I'm used to as well like being in London, which is um which is a bit weird, but I've um I kind of grown to like it as well. So, all right, and last one. Um, so, you know, having played over in Europe and also playing here, what's been your favorite away city so far? Away city? Um, um, I'd have to say um, probably Miami. Um, Miami, Miami or um, North, North Carolina, I think it was. Mm-hmm. That was a good one. But, um, yeah, probably Miami is probably top of my list, definitely. Nice. Did you guys get to go oh, out and kind of like hang around a little bit while you're down there? Um, um, we did a bit, but because it was um, it was a week game, um, everything was quite closed, um, which was a shame. But um, just the city itself, like when we got there, the scenery was really nice. Um, yeah, it was, it was something. It was just something um, I experienced. I definitely enjoyed it. Dope, dope, dope. Well, definitely. Hope you, you know, enjoy your time out here. Like I said, if you come to Atlanta, like tap in with me. Happy to show you around a little bit. Um, but yeah, live live it up, man. Like as you guys, you know, travel to different away cities, try to yeah, you know, grab some food and, you know, learn about the cultures. Like it's definitely a cool place to live and I think you'll enjoy it out here. Yeah, definitely. No, I'm what be what you got? No, I think it's exciting, you know. Uh how you were able to come stateside, you know, it's a unique opportunity. Uh, so I, for one, I know L is also in agreement. Uh, I'm excited for you to take the league by storm and see what may come of it after that. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions in terms of where to go, whether it's Atlanta, Miami, or some of the other locations, uh, yeah, don't, don't hesitate. No, I'll definitely, okay. definitely be reaching out. I got one more question as well. Um, so what are your some what are some of your like career aspirations? So even thinking like not only like the top of your football career, but also your career after football. Like what are some your aspirations? Um, um I'll say for an easy one for after football, um, we'd be involved in some some form of coaching. That's something um i um I think I'd enjoy getting into. Um I say coaching like younger players, I feel like um, I feel like I'd enjoy working with kids, just seeing them like improve, um, just get better and develop, develop yeah. developing them before they get to that that um that um that um pro stage would be something I'd enjoy. And, Did you um, have a lot of black coaches growing up? Um yeah, I had I had quite a few in my academy. Oh, I which, love um, that. um Justin Co- Co- Cochran, um um Hugo Egg um those were some um key um black coaches in my my career, I say that helped me quite a lot. Um, no, I think that makes a world of difference. So wow, that's yeah. that's really cool. So yeah, I, I, just, I like to be like, um, be that like just as inspiring as um, they was to me, mm-hmm. and that to that some younger kids. Yeah, for sure. You don't see a lot of black coaches out here, so the more the yeah. merrier. You know, are you working on your yeah. coaching badges already? Um, no, that's something um, I want to get into as well when I'm out here. Definitely. I bet. What about uh on the pitch? What are some of your aspirations? Um, um, definitely um, I, I definitely want to um, play in the MLS. That's something. Um, that's like one of my like um, I say like short term achievements right now to um to get into that level. Um, I thought that's a level that I can um I can play at. So that's that's what I'm like on my mind at the moment. Dope, yeah, dope. I know a couple of teams that could probably use your services right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's one up the road. And the striker. <laughs> but uh yeah. That's about it. What you got a Moby? No, that's it. Um we close now or um Okay, here we go. Well, um because I really appreciate you for taking 
the time. Uh, I know your schedule's busy, um, but it was a pleasure having you on the show. Any last words, any way people can follow, you know, what you got going on um, before we close? Um, um, Instagram is probably the, um, that's the only social media I'm, I'm really using right now. So um, that'd be a summer to like follow me um, on my on that football sort of thing. Perfect. And um, well, thanks for having me. Definitely. No, nah, most definitely. We're definitely going to be keeping in touch. Um, well, that's it for this week. For our show, subscribe, rate, and review. It helps us get discovered. Follow us on the socials at Two Cents FC Show. If you want to support the show, here it is. Join our Patreon, patreon.com dash or slash, sorry, the Two Cents FC Show. Once again, if you want to support the show, join our Patreon, patreon.com slash the Two Cents Show, the Two Cents FC Show. Uh, make sure that's going to be in the show notes. So make sure you guys support and tweet us your comments, me or L on any topics you want to discuss. The only show that's giving you unfiltered thoughts and opinions on a weekly basis. But there you have it. Peace out.